Now, what this doctor had to deal with had nothing to do with him wearing that mask, okay? So, the people who said that you don't want to wear a mask because of racism, the doctor in this clip that I'm about to use by fair use, um, he wasn't stopped by the police because he was wearing a mask. He was stopped by the police because he was wearing brown skin. This is why I train in martial arts. I live in this, I've lived in the neighborhood for over a year, um, and my van has been parked there for a similar amount of time. Um, all my neighbors know me uh, personally by, by name, uh, first name, and I don't, I didn't really hear that. So, you know, I, I can't really speak to the validity of, of what he's saying, but I, I live in this neighborhood and I haven't seen much mm -hmm. around like littering of yeah. trash. Uh, what I can tell you is that I do live in a predominantly Cuban neighborhood and, you know, it, it just, it's just ironic that he would pull down the street one way very slowly and then pull back around to approach me uh, about something like this, especially during you know, a time where we're, we're in a pandemic, we're supposed to practice social distancing. Mm -hmm. uh, he's supposed to have a mask on. And it was just, it was really humiliating, honestly. That humiliating, I and, and, humiliating and potentially dangerous. And I'm watching this and I'm disturbed watching you. You have a mask on. Granted, it's been uh, knocked off in this. But you're right, that officer has no mask. He's got no gloves. He is handling you, and there's no social distance going on right there. That alone is very disturbing, something that needs to be addressed. Can I ask you, um, Dr. Henderson, what you want to have happen, what you want to see come from this? I found this video on YouTube where they show Dr. Armin Henderson being arrested while he was unloading supplies for homeless people outside of his own house. Let's move it along to the confrontation. Just for the sake of fair use. So, see this? Did they say that they were patrolling the area because a black man was wearing a mask? Nope. And that's the same kind of excuse that he would have got 
before Corona. I'm telling you, I, I, my, I've been told my traffic light is out when it's not. I mean, we got a complaint from, um, we got a complaint from someone and one guy, one cop, it was his mother. He actually leveled up. It was my mom, man. Mom didn't like seeing that Negro walking out back there. So she actually didn't like watching, see that Negro practice karate in public. So she called her son. We can't go for jogs. This is pre-COVID. Pre-COVID could, couldn't go for jogs. This is happening during COVID-19. But I'm telling you that before COVID-19, the same thing, man. Let me stop now. Let me get to my commentary on the video. But you see this? Do you see what he was doing, right? He was unloading supply. You see? He's unloading supplies from his own van in front of his own house, and he's not allowed to do that. And it had nothing to do with his mask or the color of his mask. It had everything to do with that brown skin skin he happens to be wearing what if he didn't have a wife to speak up for him what if his wife was of a race that has that that cop didn't like for him to be dating see what i'm saying so if you have watched the full full clips and full news stories about the situation the cop who arrested that doctor was not wearing a mask and he was not wearing gloves on the COVID-19 outbreak. And he basically put that doctor's life in danger by being it by, you know, putting him at risk, putting him at risk by not trying to guard against transmission of the virus. And that cop has a good chance of having it because he is, has more contact with the public than probably even that doctor does. So, he could have, he may have infected that man with something. I prayed and hoping that he doesn't. And I want you to pray for the doctor. But um, as far as like, you know, racism goes, this was happening before COVID-19. Wearing a mask didn't stop anyone from harassing that black man. And it also didn't cause anyone to harass that black man either. That type of stuff is stuff that happens all the time. COVID or not. Now, the doctor said, and I don't think I got in this clip. I think I, it may have, he may have said it after I finished recording, but he said that he has training that allows him to stay calm. Now, the only thing I don't like about him saying that is not that it's not true, because that's totally true and that's totally great. But I'm thinking that people may think that the only way to get the kind of training that can enable you to stay calm is to become a doctor. No. I don't know if doctors get that kind of training or not because I'm not a doctor. I've never been to medical school. But I do know another area where you can get that kind of training where you can learn to stay calm. And that is in the martial arts and also from a good spiritual leader from, you know, if you apply biblical principles. Those are two areas where you can learn to stay calm. And also a third area would actually be yoga. So that's why I recommend for every, especially black dude, but any man whose skin is at least as brown as mine, regardless of what your nomenclature is, okay, your racial designation or whatever, really any man who's masculine, period, these days, I don't want to get into that. In, in, any man that's masculine, just, you need to work on, you're going to have to work on your self-control. And it's not you. It's not the you're toxic. It's the bias of the society. I think you know what I'm trying not to get into. But <sighs> breathing. You see how I breathe into my shoulder. <sighs> Diaphragmatic breathing. <sighs> being able to be calm and being able to stay outside of your ego. Find things and ways that allow you to do that, that it will teach you how to keep a cool head. Martial arts are a good thing. Combat sports are a good thing for that. Going to a decent church where you are mentored by a really good pastor, priest, nuns. For me, it was the nuns. All those nuns gave me the blues at Catholic school. But they, but they were good, though. Your nuns, good mentors, 
good family, good friends, people that are a positive influence. And if you're into yoga at all, breathing, the breathing exercises, your four seasons breathing, your four, six, eight, four, seven, eight breathing, even two to one breathing. <sighs> Breathe. And you know what else helps you stay calm too? Cardio. Cardio can help you stay calm. Because once your heart starts going, but you're used to your heart going, you go, oh, this is just like a run. And you can stay calm. Because just imagine if you got really bad cardiovascular endurance. So you got the stress of the situation coming on top of the stress that you have because your body's just not used to. And your heart's going to be going. Your heart's going to be going anytime you got an encounter with an aggressive police officer. I don't care who you are. Your heart rate's going to go faster than it does at rest for 99% of the population. So those things, that training that you can get to be calm, you don't have to just get it from medical school. You can get it from these various activities. And sadly, it is a type of training that I guess a lot of black American guys develop and go through. Because again, I, the video I saw, which I didn't get a chance to record it, if I can find it, I'm just gonna stick it after this part of the video or maybe in between. I'm not sure if I find something. Man, that was happening before COVID. They were profiling us, pulling us over, people stopping you in front of your own house. He got stopped in front of his own house and his wife had to come outside and vouch for him. That was happening pre-COVID. You can ask my wife. She used to like, she used to get mad when we first started years ago, first started going out. You don't ever drive faster. Why do you obey every single law on the road? What I say, you see. And she was like, oh my God. She was a black woman, was a black woman. She is a black woman. Like she stopped being black or something. <laughs> she literally didn't understand until she sat next to me while I'm driving. Once we, once I started driving her car, which is a lot newer than the bucket I was driving at the time. She was like, they pull you over for anything. You didn't even do anything. You stopped at the stop. They still following you. Why are they following us? You're not a drug dealer. You don't get in trouble. Why are they following you? I remember I got pulled over. You went over the speed limit. She was like, you did like 56. I was watching. You did like 56. You did like 60. It's not like you were going 85 and a 45. I'm like, eh, eh, eh. Eh, eh. What you going to do? And, you know, and as an aside, while I do appreciate when I'm pulled over by African-American police officers, then they sun you because if, especially if you did something wrong, like, like one time I let my tags expire because I was so busy, then they're going to give it to you and be like, hey, you know what would have happened if the wrong one pulled you over? Boy, you lucky I pulled you over. Then they, they make you feel stupid like when you go to your uncle or something and you did something dumb. And they, they sun you and they're like, hey, you know, you, you need to keep that... I, do you know what I can do to you? You know, that's kind of, that, that hurts the pride a little bit. Hey, but I'd rather have that than night sticks upside the head, you know? And you, you can't think, oh, well, hey, he knows martial arts, so if the cops attack him, he can defend himself. That would be like the worst thing I could do. That would be the worst thing I could do because then if I do something, then that's more ammunition for them to get back up. Then they go, oh, he's got, oh, he's a martial artist. So all 25 of us have to come and club him. You know, it would be best just to go along with the situation and sue later. And if you do have to do something to defend yourself, you would only, you would just have to trust, it, it, you know, it would be because like you were literally life in danger. And if you didn't move out the way or whatever it was, they were going to kill you. And that rarely happens even when people are being abusive. So that's why you can't always, even though somebody's being aggressive, you you should, your best thing, civilian. Now, again, when you're at war, hey, when you're at war, they're shooting, you shoot back, okay? I mean, it's war. They come with a club, move out the way, go in there, I mean, it's war, all right? You're in, you're in combat. 
But we're not in combat. We are civilians. The only thing we're combating at the time of this video is coronavirus. And like I said, all the profiling that people were talking about, why we, I don't want to wear masks to support, I want to support the African-American men, so I'm not going to wear a facial covering. You are not doing me any favors because they were pulling me over before COVID. They were stopping me in front of my own house before COVID. Not me per se, but me as a black dude. And they're going to do it afterwards. Prove me wrong, world. A lot of people say, oh, when this is over, things are going to change. And, and, and we're gonna, we now know that we're all in this together. Prove me wrong. Because I believe, it, it, all you got to do is look at the Bible and realize like, dang, people are still, they pretty much still, just like when they didn't have guns, they had sources now. We have um, guns and education in the internet, but we still behave like we did in these scriptures. Prove me wrong. Prove to me that the world can change and be a better place. I want to be wrong, but I think that as soon as this is over, we're going to go right back to doing the same thing. And that's probably why as soon as this is over, we're going to have another onslaught of this thing because people are going to go right back to doing the same thing because people are people. And that's what people do. People do what people do, and they're just going to do it because they can't help themselves because they're people. Well, prove me wrong, world. Prove this guy wearing this old middle-aged man like myself who's wearing a flash t-shirt. Prove him wrong, please. But I don't think you will. So please pray for that doctor. I forgot his name. Please pray for that man. I hope he didn't get the virus. Because, just like I said, that cop has put him in danger and he put that guy's wife in danger. And that guy's wife had to come out there and save him. Because, and he said, in another thing that I watched, he said, they've been arresting homeless people for putting up tents in his area. That type of stuff was going on before COVID. So, again, don't think because you don't want to, you don't think that I won't wear a mask. You ain't helping nobody. You want to help somebody. Let's change the society. First, if you want to help somebody else, change yourself spiritually so you can be a positive influence on this world. Thanks for watching this video. Like, comment, and subscribe. Please share this with people like talk, talk, talk about the martial arts. Help me get my views up. I don't have a lot of views on these things. Help me get my views up. Okay? And you know what? If you feel stuck and trapped in the house, you know what I want you to do when you watch this video? If you're watching it during COVID-19, wrap your face up and go for a walk. You'll feel a lot better. And peace. And thank you. With the exception.